patients with type 1 diabetes take insulin because their pancreas fails to produce enough. Some patients with type 2 diabetes end up taking insulin because their cells become more resistant to insulin over time, and insulin helps overcome their resistance. Insulin is a naturally occurring hormone secreted by pancreas. Insulin is required by the cells of the body in order for them to remove and use glucose from the blood. Cells require glucose in order for them to carry out their required functions. Patients with diabetes have an inability to take up and use glucose from the blood, and as a result, the glucose level in the blood rises. By incre increasing the uptake of glucose by cells and reducing the concentration of glucose in the blood, insulin prevents or reduces the long-term complications of diabetes, including damage to the blood vessels, eyes, kidneys, and nerves. Insulin is administered by injection under the skin. The abdomen is preferred because absorption of the insulin is more consistent from this location than other locations. There are three sources of insulin. First one is animal insulin, which is extracted from the pancreases of dead pigs and cattle. Bovine insulin is derived from cattle, and it is different from human insulin by only three amino acid residues. Porcine insulin is derived from pigs, and it is different from human insulin by only one amino acid residue. These are oldest type of insulin and have been used for more than 80 years. Both porcine and bovine insulin work fine for the majority of patients. However, some patients have allergies or reactions to the foreign proteins. These patients should only use human insulin. Second is human synthetic insulin, which is made by recombinant DNA technology. Human insulin is grown in the lab inside common bacteria like E. coli and yeast. Human synthetic insulin was developed to increase the supply of insulin worldwide. Third one is genetically modified insulin analogs, which is the newest type. It is made by genetically modifying the structure of human synthetic analogs. Insulins can be categorized largely into four types according to their action profile. There are rapid acting analogs, regular or short acting analogs, intermediate acting analogs, and long acting analogs. Selecting the appropriate insulin depends largely on the desired time course of insulin action. This table summarizes pharmacodynamic characteristics of each type, time to onset of action, peak action, effective duration of action, and maximum duration. However, it is important to understand that these numbers can vary considerably between individuals and sources of information. As you can see in this figure, these four types of insulins have their own characteristics. For example, short-acting insulins such as aspart Lispro tend to provide the highest peak of plasma insulin levels with the shortest duration of action, whereas long-acting insulins such as Glargin provides constantly low plasma insulin levels with the longest duration of action. This allows flexibility to health providers in selecting the most appropriate insulin for the patient. Your physician may prescribe you a regimen that requires home mixing of insulin. This therapy requires mixing of a specific quantity of short-acting and long-acting insulin. Short-acting insulin is used to cover the blood glucose rise from your meals, and long-acting insulin is used to cover blood glucose between meals. Your provider should provide a detailed education session regarding the proper technique to mix insulin, but there is a general rule of thumb that you should always keep in mind is that you always drop the clear before the cloudy. Clear is your short-acting and cloudy is your long-acting insulin. You should be aware that some insulin should never be mixed. The two that are available now are Lantus and Levomir. Mixing of these insulin may result in unpredictable glucose control that can potentially result in life-threatening situation. Self-mixed insulin should be used immediately because there are no data supporting long-term storage. When in doubt, consult with your healthcare providers. Last but not least, how do you store insulin? Insulin can be stored at room temperature for up to four weeks. You also have the option to refrigerate insulin. However, injecting cold insulin can be painful. Therefore, it is advised to store the insulin you are currently using or the opened one at room temperature while storing your extra unopened vials in the refrigerator until the stamped expiration date. You also never want to freeze insulin and never expose it to direct sunlight and extreme temperature. So avoid storing your insulin in places such as your car where there is a huge variation in temperature and direct exposure to sunlight. It is also very important to always check the expiration date before using and never use expired insulin. Visually examine the insulin bottle for any impurities before each use. So American Diabetes Association recommends to check for particles or discoloration if you're using regular insulin and for MPH or Lente to check for frosting or crystals inside the insulin or on the side of the vial. Therefore, if you see any of the above, do not use your insulin.
All opened and sealed vials can be stored in their refrigerator for 28 days, except Novelin, which can be stored for 30 days. Unopened insulin vials can be stored until the stamped expiration date. If you want to store insulin at room temperature, whether it's opened or not, it can only be stored for 28 days. When it comes to pens, once it's opened, it cannot be refrigerated. But if it's not opened, it can be stored in the fridge until the expiration date. Room temperature storage for pens vary between 7 days to 30 days, so make sure to check individual storage recommendation in the package insert that comes with your insulin. This concludes our presentation. For additional information about insulin, talk to your pharmacist.